Hello and welcome to Your Town Television. I'm Thomas Sid, your host. I'm here today with Tom Gundelfinger O'Neill, photographer, storyteller, raconteur, artist, all that other, all yeah, that other great stuff. Yeah, I don't know. You're way too kind. All right. <laughs> we've we've been having this this conversation since we met about 12 years ago, and it started with it started with with photography and and an, uh, a piece that you and I were doing together uh, that still hangs on my wall. I'm very proud of. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about uh, your artistic background. And uh, someone said uh, once about your work, and then you sort of paraphrase it, is that you indicated as a photographer that you work more as a paintbrush than a tool for photojournalism. Yeah. Tell me about that. Yeah. Well, it's, it's again, that influence that I had from when I was in school uh, studying painting and design. Uh, and and it, it has such a broad spread once you get into other mediums, like photography or music, um, mm -hmm. creative writing, a anything. Um, and, and so I go back to that. And the, there's fundamental pro principles that you, that you have in painting or in design that, that cross over so quickly into photography. So for me to just think, OK, I'm taking a picture, and this is I'm documenting a moment which is more of a photojournalistic thing. Sometimes you don't have a chance to sit there and compose or do anything like that. There's a right. wonderful axiom I heard years ago, like everything in the photograph should be there. So if there's something in there and it doesn't work, then you got to move it around or do something like that. Well, quite often you don't have that kind of control. But when you do, um, then it's a whole different process. And you can take your time and, and you know, go after that particular shot that you're trying to get. And in a commercial assignment, you get a, uh, a direction, generally. And uh, sometimes you've got an art director standing right over your shoulder, right. and you're showing him the images, or you can tether your camera to the computer, and you can make all these adjustments. And that works, that works very successfully. But um, when you have somebody who gives you an email and says, um, shoot from the ground up, be provocative when they're talking about me taking a picture of a, of a race car. Right. Um, that's a little obscure. You know, be provocative, shoot from the ground up. And don't identify the racetrack. So I'm talking about an assignment I got several years ago to shoot an Audi R8 at Sebring Raceway in Florida for Tudor watches, okay. which is also Rolex. And the, the assignment came out of Geneva and I had one little photo of a Formula One car that was photographed um, in, in near the pit area, but you really couldn't see, you couldn't see the racetrack. So that, that was kind of the idea about don't, don't ID the track. So I went to, um, I went to Florida, and the- uh, That's you. That's me on the ground. Uh, that's a difficult selfie to take from that position. So yeah, well- Somebody else was there. Yeah, the guy who brought the car down from Ohio in a trailer Okay. Uh, it cost almost seven thousand dollars to get the car there, and when I found that out, I realized, wow, this is a big responsibility. They, they Somebody tr really has their trust, trust in Tom me. Yeah, to get they the shot. really trust me to get the shot, <laughs> and that that that, that really, uh, I guess I, I have to say that. Whoa, okay, I'm going to nail it. You know, <laughs> there's no there is no option for failure. You know, right. we're we're just um, we're going to get this. So um, I had this kid help me quite a bit. He was wonderful. But I had no assistant. I, I went thinking, oh, I'll just photograph the car. I almost thought in a way the car was, it was, it was like a press release, that there would be other photographers there. Right. And when I got there, the track was uh, closed to the public. They were testing cars. And I asked, I said, well, where's the other photographers? They said, you're it. What? Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, man. It was. But so they didn't say you have two minutes to photograph the car. No, right? I had a day and a half. And I said, I'm going to get it. Oh, I ran to Home Depot. I got extra lights. I got um, aluminum sheets for reflectors. So I, I, I put my, <laughs> my photographer's hat on. But it, it was uh, uh, the one thing that did help in the beginning, because I, uh, I was told that there would be an Audi, uh, the R8, which is a beautiful car to begin with. I went on Pinterest, and I, I Googled, I looked up and, and just said Audi R8. I wanted to see how other photographers had interpreted it. And about 90% of the images were from the back showing that the, the rear part of the car probably has its, some of its best design features. Mm -hmm. So I rented a lens, uh, tilt and shift, uh, wide angle lens, thinking, OK, I can maybe distort it a little bit more. So I literally, when I took this shot, I got down on the ground and um, tried 
to do my magic and tried to let Mother Nature do her magic. And somehow this beautiful cloud cover came in in the morning. And anyway, that's the way the shot ended up uh, in the ad. And that, that particular photo went all over the world. Uh, it was in magazines. It was in uh, the IMSA race car programs. It was Le Mans. It was uh, at Basel in Switzerland. Tudor really used it. They got a tremendous use out of it. And I'm, I was very proud of the do fact. You, do you have, a as, as with other artists, particularly musicians, and I used to be real active in jazz, do you have performance anxiety when you know you go there, you're the only photographer, they spent a lot of money to get it there, the track is closed, you got a day and a half, and you don't know where this photograph might end up, right? I mean, you know you're, you've got a client, but you got an email. Uh, do you ever think about what if this thing goes worldwide? Does that, does that contribute to how you create your work? I didn't think that far. I just wanted to get the shot they wanted. That yeah. was that was what was driving me more than anything. And there's no room for anxiety and fear and all that kind of thing. Even when I speak today, uh, I you know in the very early days, I, sure I I had uh, I had a nervous tummy and all that, and butterflies and all that kind of stuff. But uh, I finally found a way to deal with anxiety, and it's just a waste of time. It gets in the way. So uh, fear definitely gets in the way, and that's yeah. a form of anxiety. So. Uh, in these photo shoots, no matter how big it is, uh, I go in with the idea that I'm going to get the shot. And it's believing in yourself and trusting yourself as well. When people believe in me, I have to believe in me. And, and I believe making in that connection with the subject, which you, talk, you and I have talked about a lot, about being in the moment, that overused phrase. You've got you've to be able to do that to suspend everything before and after, right? You have to. You have to, and it's that, that whole thing about uh, mindfulness where you have to you know, suspend all judgment and be right there. Yeah. And, and I was right there with that car. I got to know that car very, very well. And uh, I even tried something uh, at night. This was one of the last shots. There was a full moon. There is a little bit of Photoshop work where the mo moon got a little bit bigger, but not much. Yeah. And uh, I, um, uh, I also submitted that, but the, the one you saw is what they ran with. And, and I, I, I'm very proud of that image. But, you know, I photograph other cars as well, and this is a shot that I took very recently. This was back in January. And again, this is trust. Uh, that car there is going uh, close to 200 miles an hour, and I have to get the, the shot of that car winning this particular race. This is the Rolex 24-hour race, the endurance race, and um, this is Chip Ganassi's Ford winning it, and I had to get the electronic banner showing the Rolex logo, and I had to get the Pearl of the, f of the, the victory flag, flag. Right that had to be all perfect. Now, you could go back in and post-production and, and grab different images from other shots and put it together, but there's no time. So this one shot is a day and a half when the object is standing still, and here you're talking about a hundredth of a second or less. Uh, I was shooting at 20 frames a second with a Sony, with this new Sony A9, unbelievable camera. And uh, I started shooting way before <laughs> the car was anywhere near, but I nailed it, and that shot immediately went out. I mean, it's the, the, the immediacy is amazing. But so you got all those elements, as you said, everything that's in that, in that photograph is supposed to be there. Exactly. Extraneous is there. taken out. Everything's there. And that went out oh, and um, literally all over the world through racing magazines um, and blogs and all that. Here's another shot of the same car. Mm -hmm. And you don't know that car's going to win. So this is during the race. So I'm sh shooting a lot of the a lot of the cars coming through, but here, this car's a little bit slower now, about 90. And this is another technique where you, you kind of blur the background, you move with the car. Right. And, but, but trying to freeze the car in a way and still show the movement is something that's always been very frustrating for me because that last shot, the car looks like it's parked. It doesn't show it's going at that <laughs> tremendous speed. So at least in this one, I'm, sh I'm trying to show the dynamics of the speed that these cars and the noise and you're standing there, and here comes these, these things. And one, there's two or three right behind it, and there's been already a number of them gone in front of it. It's, it's an intense situation. So um, shooting cars has been, uh, I, I really enjoy it. It's another art form. So you, you, you start out by painting. You go to Monterey Pop, and it's loud, and it's bands, and lots of people moving around. You move into to really photography as a career, and you start doing album covers and artwork. Um, then you get into now you've got, you know you've got your subject. You know it's not George Bush standing still. It's a car going by at 200 miles an hour. Yeah. Okay. So now let's slow the thing way back down. I want to I want to talk about it a little bit here. Is taking it back to to your your roots. 
right, where you started and you were studying painting. And now let's just kind of quiet the whole thing down. Let's talk about this next image you're going to bring up. Well, um, this is one where it was actually for a music video. And I was to get um, some behi BTS behind the scenes and some stills that they also wanted to use for social media. But it was a, a unique situation. Um, it, this, there is no Photoshop in this photo. So now you're dealing with basically I'm an dealing untamed animal and a child in the woods. And I've been given a lot of freedom. Um, the, and a the gun? <laughs> Stun gun? <laughs> <laughs> the the uh, uh, Jack Richardson, the producer of this, uh, wonderful, wonderful guy. I've known him a long time. Um, and knows me, and he, wa he just basically wanted me to, to be me. He says, do your thing. And so I had uh, this artistic freedom. I had a big right. palette. And w when I saw this, and I tried a lot of things there. We were down in Big Sur. Anyway, there's this one scene where this eight-year-old girl confronts this two-ton bull <laughs> named Buck. <laughs> and uh, in, in this, in this uh, forest, just th this kind of covered with ferns and all that, it was just real m magical and mystical and everything. And uh, uh, there's a lot of trust going on. Uh, first of all, <laughs> <laughs> there better be. <laughs> that little girl is trusting that bull. Now, the bull is te has a big ring through his nose, and he's tethered by uh, uh, a very strong cord that I photoshopped out uh, that's attached to his trainer. And the bull is very, very tr well trained anyway. But I, there was something going on there about the, the, just the having the bull and her eyesight and the way they're confronting each other. And, and, I, it, and I got to capture that. Yeah. But I, I, that was art for me. The, I was having an artistic moment. There's nothing photojournalistic or capturing the moment. That was just, that was painting more than, than and I had to get it very fast. Mm -hmm. uh, because right after that, the, the bull started to move around. But, I was, uh, but I thought art more than anything. I was painting. I was, I was absolutely euphoric about it. And uh, here's another one that uh, my wife and I were on our way down to L.A. and we're going through the road to Spreckles, and we it were very early yeah, in the morning. I recognize that. Yeah, and we we see this. My wife is driving. She says, um, "Molly, my it's a very good, very, she's a great photographer and an incredible painter. Her eye is extraordinary." And she just says, "You got to get this. You got to get this." So we pull over, and I jump out, and I take this picture. And that just kind of broadsided. It's this, this beautiful image. And as soon as I put the camera up, I said, oh, this is extraordinary. It, it, it went right here. And I could have stayed there an hour. We were, we were on our way, and we were trying to be trafficked. But I got it so fast. So this comes back to the same themes, is, is approaching it as a paintbrush instead of a camera, uh, being in the moment, spontaneity, yeah. creativity, uh, a lot of visual editing, uh, and paying attention. Paying you know. attention. In my profession, Charles Moore, architect, uh, big influence when I was in graduate school. Um, he, uh, he was being interviewed, and people are expecting a very esoteric answer from, a, from an architect about space and story and all that. And he said, 90% of architecture is about paying attention, yeah. which means being in the moment, looking at all the variables that come at you, whether it's program or site or whatever it is. And it sounds like, you know, my being an architect and a musician, you're being a painter and a photographer, there's a lot of that sort of connective tissue that goes between these dif different disciplines. Oh, absolutely. And you, you, you have to open your eyes, <laughs> and you open your heart. And yeah. when you open your heart, I know it sounds a little, little crystal ballish, airy, fairy, yeah. and new age, and all that, but, but there's, there's truth to that. But you, when, you, when you lock in here, uh, things start to happen, because you are in the moment. And the more you are in the moment, the more you see. Okay, so you've gone from large groups, bands. Now we're now we're down here, what on Carmel Beach? You're by yourself. Uh, now this is actually I've gone down to shoot a wedding. Okay. Uh, I'm in Laguna Beach and uh, in the hotel where I'm staying. I was up on the eighth floor. Right. Uh, early in the morning, I was I was actually just looking at the water and the patterns that the waves made and the white water made on the beach. I was trying to just shoot that because I saw as it moved. It was just. It's a fascinating visual. As when you take the time to look and open your eyes and get in the zone, all this has been going on for a long time. Mm -hmm. Michelangelo and Da Vinci, any great artist that's ever done anything has gotten into that zone, been totally there within the moment, within their heart. All circuits are running. Mm -hmm. And the extraneous stuff around you that takes away from the moment, that's disappeared. And here was one of those moments. And I was hanging over the edge of the balcony looking at the water. 
uh, and the way these the the white uh, white patterns on the on the sand and this woman starts walking by and I see her and I just start shooting and by the time she had gotten to this point I went oh my god and the shadow and everything look at the quality of the, of the light figure it was her shadow against the reflections on the sand and but and if I light. had not been in that that state of mind right. I would have looked out and seen a woman walking on the beach or you would have been standing there with your phone checking emails saying <laughs> what time do we have to be at the meeting right you, you got it okay so so um, getting back to this this being in the moment going into the zone and all that um, Molly and I lived in Carmel for about a year and a half a few years ago mm -hmm. and we were about four blocks from the beach and we would take our dog down Dolce every morning because all dogs like you know love to run on that beach and I st would go down there and I started looking at the waves. I've been on Carmel Beach hundreds of times but I was starting to go down there where I had time to really look out at the beach in the water and I saw things happening that I'd never seen before so I went back got my camera and started to study the wave patterns mm -hmm. and I started to move and again I thought wait a minute why it, you know you can freeze a race car because c the car will stop but you can't freeze a wave right. you, people take extraordinary photos right. of split second action of a wave breaking but that wave went on to become a finished wave and then another wave came because a wave will never stop water will never stop the waves never okay. stop coming so I said, why try and freeze something that will be continual forever? So why not go with it and move with it? So I developed a way by manipulating the camera and the shutter speed and moving with the cadence and the, and the movement and the speed of the wave, and I started getting these um, very impressionistic images. And uh, this is a lone surfer out there. But um, you can't tell what it is, but it, it captures something. And it's the, the these, painterly. These look, these look like uh, they're done with Prismacolor, that they're actually hand-drawn, which is something that, in, in my work, I try to bring to a, uh, you know, a simple building elevation, is bring that same back in using a pencil on a building that'll be, you know, well, a concrete and glass. And you're doing this with a camera. It's taking, it's taking your work to get one more step. Well, and it, it's probably a hybrid because I'm not mixing oils or anything like that. I'm using yeah. modern-day digital technology with the camera and then also with the computer but I'm still I'm painting the whole process of what I'm doing with this is the same process of, of when I was in art school and I I had a uh, seven foot by nine foot canvas in front of me and I, I loaded myself up with paints got on my bicycle and I drove myself into the canvas <laughs> and all the other students thought I was totally nuts but <laughs> it the, was but the professor thought I was brilliant and I got an A in the course so well we've anyway. got just a couple of seconds left I want to uh, take a, a quote that uh, a quote from you when you're describing all of this and this has really been a, a really fun journey we've had today is and this sounds a little bit corny for some people out there but what you said was when you create from the heart you touch a heart and you've you've said that many times uh, and we've looked at your work with uh, cars and bulls and kids and <laughs> yeah. rock stars and presidents and yeah. uh, and politicians uh, how do you sum that all up, and, and, and how does that tie back into your family? Well, it, that's, my, that's my mantra. That's what drives me, and everybody in my family has heard that a number of times, and there's a lot of artists in my family, so I'm very proud of that. So that resonates quite a bit. So it, it inspires your, your work now, culminating... Well, you're going to be doing this for a while. Not culminating, but 50 <laughs> years plus. I'm, I'm, uh, I haven't hit the last gear yet. I'm well, still this, having a this great time. this childlike enthusiasm that somebody said you have, is it doesn't seem to be going away. I love life. That's fabulous. Yeah. Okay, just to show that, that photography isn't all serious, uh, we asked that we put a little clip in here at the end that shows part of this is, aside from all the hard work, you've got to have fun doing it, right? Yeah. This was for a video that my son directed, and he asked me to do a cameo where I play a director, actually, and I have a little dance sequence, so you'll see it. You should, you should put this on when you get on Jimmy Kimmel and talk about oh. stuff there. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> this awesome. is Tom Hood. Uh, we've been with Tom Gunnelfinger O'Neill. Thanks for joining us. Really get into it. Great. <laughs> really good.
Yeah, we can hear. And then do more of this. I get it directed. Yeah. And do some of my moves, you know, like. Yeah. Just do some more, like, jazzy stuff. Yeah, there you go. All right, back up, back up, come back. Really, really, like, yeah, weird. Get weird with it. And hold that. And cut. Great, great.